Tim Hager. Two scrubbing brushes. Another pint. Where's your money? Well, I... Uh... <laughs> Two chimneys. Brewster. Come over here. I want to show you a new piece of material. It's fresh off the Boston packet. Isn't that fine quality? Now feel it. Be a wonderful dress for your little girl. Don't you think so? Hmm? It's money, money, money with your poster. Nothing but money. I've been sorry for him ever since his wife ran off with that lieutenant. If he'd spent less on whiskey, he wouldn't have lost his wife. Let me show you another piece. Drunk or sober, Ma would have left him anyhow. She was that kind. Yeah, how do you like that for quality, huh? Let me have it. Very well, Tim Hager. You'll have your whiskey. But this is the last time... All right, I... all right, Poster, no preaching. It's his little girl I feel sorry for. Poor little Jenny Hager. Faster, you're not even trying. Faster, faster, faster. to come to boarding school with me, Jenny? Would you? Boarding school? Yes. I like that. I can't send you to boarding school, but you could come live at the house and earn your keep, I guess. Help in the kitchen and run errands for Mrs. Saladine. No. If I can't go to boarding school with Meg, 
stay with my father. Hmm. All right. He is your father, at least in the eyes of the law. Now, you look after that girl of yours, Tim Hager, and stop being a disgrace to Banger. Thank you, Your Honor. Drive on. Carry on, Poster. We'll take you to your father's store. That tight biscuit, sour blooded old skin flint. You might be better off in Mrs. Saladine, Jenny. Not in Mrs. Saladine's kitchen. I've no money to bring you up properly. Never mind. Before long, we'll have everything. Houses and carriages, horses and kitchen rooms. All those things, my lass. You're a wee bit young. Just as soon as I grow up, we'll have everything we want. Because I'm going to be beautiful. Why should I? The sailors will all come up here anyway. Oh, but the best ones get picked off down at the dock. Listen, honey, with your looks, you don't have to worry. Why, you can get the youngest and the best-looking man on the river. I don't want the youngest. I want the rich. Jenny, that's a recipe for trouble. Don't worry about me. I can handle trouble. I know you can. <laughs> Right, Mr. Heater, but you needn't haul it. Someone might hear you out in the street. Who, for instance? Jenny, for instance. Jenny. See the cargo? Mm -hmm. It's exciting. Yeah, we get used to it after a time. I suppose I import more stuff than any other man in the state of Maine. How many vessels do you think I own? I count them, the lumber barges. Fifty-six. Who told you? Somebody. Here, have some tea. Got a handkerchief? Well, I don't need one. Take a good handful of it there. It's a present. The work was hard and the voice was long. The seas were high and the gales were strong. So he hold the land from all the way to heaven. The same life as our work is done. Yo ho! I thought I heard the skipper say, Leave her, Johnny, leave her. It's easy to get to be a rich man. And believe me, it's hard. Now, when I first came to this town over 30 years ago, with nothing but a peddler's pack on my back, I... Hey, you! You! Get away from that girl! Hey, you! Wait! Well, I was just saying to myself, I bet my good old friend Tim Hager is sitting right this very minute in the purple whale and wouldn't mind passing the time of day with me. Lena. What do you want? A glass of whiskey for Mr. Hager. Sure. Good. 
Go on, Tim. Drink up. The next one's on me. You'll not tell Jenny? No, of course not. I promise her not to touch it. <laughs> You're Jenny. You know, she's getting so she wants to boss everything and everybody. <laughs> she's grown too beautiful for her own good. Why do you always wish to be talking about Jenny? Oh. I don't think I like why you always want to be talking about Jenny. Oh, now wait, Tim. Give me my rum and whiskey. We're not bringing a Jenny. I know what you're up to. I? Oh, why, I'm just a dried-up old herring. She's too young and beautiful. Who is your lad? You sent him to Cambridge to keep him away from her. Ephraim? Yeah. Why, he's too shy and scared of her. She's full of spirit. She's for somebody like that first mate. What first mate? Why, uh... What first mate? I lose. I first aboard the gadfly. He's as handsome as the old Nick, that boy. When I saw him and your Jenny walking away just now, I said to myself, there's a youngster who knows his way about with the women. Where are you going? Home. Like your mother. A woman. That's what you are. Just like your mother. You'd like to keep me here forever, wouldn't you? Well, you couldn't hold mother and you won't hold me. Uh, but I will, Jenny. No. This isn't the life I was born for. Men like me. And it's the men who have the money in this world. When a proper man comes along. You take him walking in the dark and kill him, most likely. I know you don't want any man ever to look at me, but they do. Lead them on, Jenny. It's too easy for you to turn a man's head. Not with you at my elbow all the time. There have been dozens of proper men ready to take me out of this trap, but will you ever let me go? I know Mr. Poster wants me. I made him want me. What do you think of that? There's a devil in the Denny Hager. A devil straight from the bad place. And I'm going to whip him out of here. You're going to beat me. This is one beating you're not right. some butter on them bruises and put her in my bed. Oh, that Tim Hager, he ought to be burst. That would take six men to do it. He's big, Mrs. Hollis, but no bigger than righteousness. If the town don't birch him, he'll be birched by the Lord. You show good sense, Jenny, in coming to me. I'll do this. You stay outside. Oh, dear, now. If you keep on crying, your face will be all swollen up tomorrow. And that's no way for a pretty face to be. He held me with one hand, so that I couldn't move. Something you wanted?
drove her out into the night like a dog that wouldn't obey. Reverend, it's the rum that does it. We ought to scourge every tavern keeper out of town and into the river. If I had my way... We ought to be deciding about the girl, Deacon Adams. There's been enough scourging for one night. One thing is decided. The girl mustn't go back to her father. No. Someone must take her in. I would. Only my daughter Mary doesn't like the poor girl. Then she's not for your house, Reverend. Make a bad situation worse. I guess we could use her to clean and maybe help in the kitchen. But a young girl eats like a man. It's more than victuals, Deacon Adams. Your wife has all the understanding in her heart that a man could ask. But Jenny's of marriageable age. Hmm. Yes, that's bad. And yet we, we can't turn her loose on the town's charity. She needs a home. Well, yours is fairly empty. Oh, no. <laughs> Leave me out of it. It wouldn't be suitable for me to take her into my house. And I have no wife. You have a housekeeper. A very respectable woman. She might leave me, and I'm not able to get another. We'd have a scandal in the town. Aye. No. Marriage is the only answer. And the answer to that is a younger man. What about your son Ephraim? They used to be so much together. Ah. Oh, schoolboy, frittering away his time at college. She needs a responsible man. Well, there must be someone. A pretty girl always has a lot of friends. What good are friends? Most of them no older than her. It's our duty to find her a good home, an honorable name, regardless of the man's age. And it should be somebody with money. And by that description, Mr. Poster, you've named yourself. Oh. Oh, no. Uh... She turned first of all to you, Isaiah. Besides, I know you are not a man to thrust the suffering lamb back into the wilderness. Maybe she won't have me. She'll marry you, Isaiah. She's a sensible girl. And in the meantime... Mary! Mary. Bring me one of your dresses. Anything, only not too expensive. I'd be good to you, Jenny, if you married me. Like a father. A good father. And he ought to know how with a son your age. You can go back to sleep now, Mrs. Hollis. You've done all you can for tonight. I'll make up Mr. Ephraim's bed for you, Mr. Poster. It ain't as warm there, but you'll be comfortable. Your father couldn't come after you, Jenny, if you married Mr. Poster. You'd be free. An intelligent girl thinks of the future when she chooses her husband. And you'd be a rich woman. It's for you to decide. Poster's a very lucky man. This has been a very lonely house for him. Out of change. Meg, yes? Will you help me? Of course, Jenny. Of course. The water glass always here. And the wine glass here. And, oh, Jenny, you'll have to get rings for the napkin. Now, the biggest plate here. Mm, money changes everything. All I ever needed before was a knife and a spoon. <laughs> but you want to be a lady. Give dinner parties and entertain your husband's friends. I'm sure Cleopatra never bothered about napkin rings. She didn't live in Bangor. Oh, that wouldn't have stopped her. It wasn't by knowing how to set a table that Cleopatra got along. Oh, Jenny. Every time I say something true about men and women, you say Jenny. Why does a proper lady have to be embarrassed about plain talk? It isn't honest, and it makes old maids. Doesn't anyone here care about church? Judge Saladine and Mr. Poster are waiting outside, and I am in the ladies' choir. Didn't apply to me that remark about old maids. I've already met my very special gentleman. 
He's not anyone in Bangor. His name's John Everett. He's Woodfoss, her husband. He's a very educated man. Is he young? A little older than I am. Good looking? Beautiful. Why don't you marry him? He won't. He has no money. Oh, that's nonsense. Does he love you? Yes. And you love him? Then make him marry you. Oh, Jenny, I wish I knew how. He's not like the others. He... He thinks things out. I'd know how. I wouldn't give him a chance to think. Before me sit the wealthiest families in Bangor. I've seen them before in the privacy of their homes and in their offices. When I came to them to ask for money to enlarge this church, they gave me not enough to erect a temple of branches on a hillside. And so again today, in the house of God, as they sit here with their consciences, I ask them now to pledge funds to enlarge this church. I cannot ask of the poor, but I can ask the wealthy. And the poor shall know the names of those who do not give. Mr. Poster. Judge Saladine. Mr. Burroughs, Mr. Bailey, Mr. Clayton, this is intolerable. If you have no feeling for your fellow men, at least take some interest in the welfare of your own children. Grog shops and low houses cover every inch of our waterfront. Our wealth is poured into Devil's Half Acre, and our young men, your sons, have nowhere else to go. Give me a bigger church and I'll keep them here. Will no one pledge to the church more than just enough to save his face? Mr. and Mrs. Isaiah Poster will contribute $1,000. If the men of Bangor won't give to the church, the women will. Mr. and Mrs. Partridge pledge $500. Judge Saladine will pledge $1,000. Jenny, I want you to go on working for the church. A church can endure only upon deeds and not lip service. I'd say her lips had done you enough service. A thousand dollars. If you think I have so much money, you ought to... Stop it, Isaiah. You're the luckiest man in Bangor. Oh, Mrs. Poston, I'm so glad to see the younger members taking an interest in the church, and I must apologize for not calling on you directly after you were married. That was a wonderful contribution, Jenny. He's a wonderful husband to let me make it. Good morning. Good day, Reverend. Good day, Reverend. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It ain't the money of mine, but I'd like to know what you're doing with it before you do it. I gave the money because I hate grog shops and what they do to people. Jenny. <clears throat> you came home, did you? I thought you'd be on your way to England or somewhere by now. Oh, England is full of architects. I knew you'd come home. 
I see you told me I sent you money to travel for a while, but I didn't think you would. I came close to it. I didn't know whether to mind your letter or mind his and go away. It's easy to see which one you thought more of. Well, why do we stand here? Let's go in or out. And let me do the writing to my son. Mr. Ephraim. My Mr. Ephraim. Why, you've grown as much as you ever will, haven't you? Oh, I'm stunted. I don't know how to bake an apple pie in Cambridge. You'll have one every day if only you'll stay here. He'll stay. You'll find little to keep you in Bangor, Ephraim. After your fine ways in Cambridge, you'll be hard to please in this town. I thought I'd come home and go to work, sir. Work? Yes. What's your time worth to anybody? What did you ever do but waste it? It wasn't wasted. He's an architect. And a good one, too. How do you know? The same way you know he ain't. You heed my advice and you'll go someplace more suitable to a, a gentleman. Anger's a boom town, loud, rough, growing faster than law and order. Takes a strong, stubborn man to make his way here. We need gentlemen, too. For what? To tell you the kind of bonnets and doodads the Boston ladies are wearing? Yes. A young man of fashion would be very popular in Bangor. I'll join you later. Well? Yes, Father. But you said yourself that Bangor was a boom town. Fortunes are made every day. Rich people will want fine houses. No fool in this town would waste his money on you. You heed what I said in my letter. Travel a bit. What makes you so angry with me? All I did was to come home. I get angry at you because, because of your ways. You think I don't know how you've been spending my money? Hard drink and easy women. I know your kind. I say, you shouldn't upset your father. I'm sorry. All right, father, I'll go away. If you really want me to. I don't think he does. You want your son to live at home, don't you, I say? I've got a headache from all this talk. I'll lock up. It's time we all got some sleep. Thank you. It's been a long time, Ephraim, hasn't it? A long time, a lot of changes. Did you really like that kind of woman? That kind he spoke about? I'd rather not talk about it, Jenny. I used to see them near our house before I came here. I used to watch them and wonder about them. I can see how women would be attracted to you. All kinds of women. Good 
Got everything? Yes, all the groceries. But no spectacles. They're hard to find. Well, I'll tell Dr. Mason to bring you up here when he comes by tomorrow. All right? Please, not Dr. Mason. He's a very good doctor, but he won't wait for his money. You're not to worry about money. Your husband worked for mine for a long time, and if Mr. Poster wants to send you a doctor and a pair of spectacles, it's his privilege. Mr. Poster. I'll be by in a few days, and in the meantime, if you need anything, send one of your children. Thank you. That's the way to hold your place in the town, Ephraim. And the people love you for it, Jerry. And I do want my husband and my son to be proud of me. Well, I wanted to see how you spend your days. Thanks for showing me. You've grown, Jenny. My father's wife's a great lady. I think behind Mrs. Isaiah Poster, you'll still find Jenny Hagen. You remember Jenny Hagen? Oh, that little ruffian. Well, she pushed me in the river right here. That isn't true. The others pushed you in. I pulled you out. Oh, that's right. You did. Of course I did. Didn't we always stick together? Ethan and Jenny, side by side against the world. Oh, we had good times here, didn't we? Better than we knew. Shall I tell you something? I always think of this as our place, yours and mine. This is where we first thought we were in love. Yeah. <laughs> Silly, wasn't it? This is why you came to tell me your father was going to send you off to college. Yeah. And I said it was because of me. And I said he'd never separate us by sending me away. Oh, Jenny, the things I said. Of course, if you'd been home the night I came to your house, I would have been married to you now. Let's go out. and wait on me the way you used to. Another time, Jenny. I want to go up and talk to Father. Hello, Father. Be with you. What you been doing all day? Hmm? I was driving Jenny around. Mighty popular in Bangor, isn't she? She does a lot of good. Spends a lot of money, you mean? If you really mind it, you could put a stop to it. You're very happy with her, aren't you? Yes. Well, I'm going to take your advice. Bangor's no place for me. When will you be leaving? Right away, before the river freezes. I thought I'd spend the winter in Boston and then go off to Europe in the spring. I think your father needs you here, Ephraim. Why, Jenny, you feet like a bird. I didn't hear a sound. You want him to stay, don't you, Isaiah? Why don't you tell him you want him to stay? Can't you be honest with your own son? I'm honest with everybody. You... You might be of some small use to me if you stay on. But if you don't like it here, get out. Only don't come reaching back again. If you go, I'm through with you. I'll take you home. Don't work too hard, Isaiah. When Bangor's Lady of Mercy goes out to deliver her packages, her sleigh should fit the season. 
That's a confession you've been thinking of me. Of course I think of you. Yet you've been avoiding me. Careful. Pain. Put it down. You leave the house early and you come home late. You never walk into a room where I am unless someone else is there. Why? Jenny, we shouldn't be standing out here like this. We might just as well be out on Main Street. Anyone could pass by. They wouldn't think anything wrong of it. You wouldn't. If you weren't thinking of me as you do. Jenny, you're married to my father. And his son loves me. He's been so good to both of us. His son has always loved me. I should have gone away. But you couldn't. Because you love me. Yes, yes, I've loved you since before I knew the meaning of the word. The day I came home, the time you kissed me. The moment I said I'd stay here, I've loved you and loved you and loved you. Jenny! Jenny! <laughs> Father's very ill. Send for a doctor. Jenny. Yes, Isaiah. I'm here. up and you'll fall in your tracks. Go to bed, child. Get some rest. No. I'm strong. Stronger than you think. I'll be all right. How is he? Just the same, sir. Is there any possibility of speaking with him, Jenny? There's trouble in town. Dr. Mason says warm weather might bring him around. But that's a long way off. We're at our wit's end. There are too many people in town, too much idleness. Did you hear the shooting last night? <laughs> that's the sort of thing we're up against. Lumberjacks coming to town between jobs with rum and women on their minds. He told us two years ago we should have a police force. We should have listened to him. Well, Jenny, take care of yourself. Meg sends you on love.
to me. Where's my money? I didn't take it. I didn't take it. Where's my money? That's never a man. That'll lose that tongue. Let us go. Keep out of this, man. People are getting hurt. I didn't steal his money. He was drunk in the bedroom. I only came in to take away the glasses. Anyone might have been there before me. That has to be my friends. Get the man's pockets before you. A hundred dollars a hole when there's work. I say different in the river. Come on, what you do with it? Oh, Kenny. Let her go. I'll give you the money. You're Mrs. Post. Yes. place to live, no place to go. It isn't right, Jenny, to be smoked out in the streets like an animal. I don't want you to worry about it, Lena. I want you to rest. Lena, do you remember the house I used to live in? Well, I want you to stay here for the night, and tomorrow you move in there. It won't cost you a cent, and uh, if anyone should bother you, you come to me. Oh, you're good, Jenny. That's why you come up in the world. That's what I tell everybody about you. Jenny, you're wonderful. You're mighty fond of children. Duncan, who did sleep here last night? Was it you or Miss Everett? Ma'am, I told you. Oh, that's just another one he has. He sometimes... He wore this hat when he brought me home from church last night. And he wore it again when he went out for a walk. Now, why aren't you supposed to tell me where he is? You put me in an awful fix, ma'am. I promised Duncan, him... Duncan, he isn't well. Couldn't you see that? What good is a promise to a sick man when it keeps his wife from helping him? Is that the trouble with him? I kind of thought he looked funny around the eyes. Where is he? Well, I'm not telling you, mind you, but that'd be the wrong kind of hat to wear up in the pine country. Where in the pine country? Fire watchers, Captain. Indian Hill. When will he be back? I don't know. Two, three days, I guess. Said he wanted to go up there and think a while. Oh, I got a loose mouth. That's my trouble. Makes two people I told where he is. Who is the other? Miss Saladine. Miss Saladine. Came in here about an hour ago and dug it out of me just like you did. Said she saw him last night alone. Acted like something was wrong. Next time he trusts me with anything, it'll... It was very good of you to come up here, Meg. But there's really nothing you can do to help me. No one can help me but myself. My whole life with Jenny has been the act of running away. I ran away from the woods where I belong. And again, I ran away from the truth when Ephraim tried to tell it to me. 
I forced myself not to believe him. I understand. If you had, you never would have married Jenny. No. This time, I'm not running away. Right or wrong, my place is with Jenny. I love her, and I'm going back to her. John, I'm glad. Because I believe that her love for you has made her as good as everyone always thought she was. Shall we go now? Jenny will be anxious. Still. You don't know how I loved you so much. I'm afraid. Oh, John, where will they bury me? Jenny, don't talk about dying. Don't let them bury me with posters. Or Ephraim, don't let them. Jenny, you're going to be all right. There'll be a doctor along, and we'll take you home. I know. They'll bury me with Ephraim. They'll bury me in that house with Ephraim. Oh, Jenny, darling, listen to me. Nothing's going to happen to you. Not now or ever, as long as I'm with you. And I'll always be with you. I never went away. You do love me? I love you more than ever. I wanted so many things. I wanted the whole world. But it was really only you. Jenny. Jenny. 